Okay, I hope all can see my screen. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much for letting me know. So students, uh, we are beginning with this first chapter of botany that is the living world. Right, we'll try to have a brief uh, description, uh, introduction. Basically, it's an introductory class where I'll try to introduce myself and I'll be telling you what, what of the chapters we'll be covering in botany and as well as in zoology as well. So, uh, just a minute. All right. So these are the list of the chapters that we'll be covering in botany. So we'll begin with the uh, with the living world. Then we have biological classification. Will where we'll be trying to understand how we can classify these organisms. And then we'll come on to plant kingdom. We'll be studying the morphology in flowering plants and anatomy in flowering plants. And then the most important one, right? This is this is my favorite one. That is the cell. Right, because currently, if you talk about, I'm also studying molecular cell biology at Nottingham Trent University. So this is like a dearest topic, which is very close to my heart. So I hope you will, you guys will be enjoying this one. And then we'll have the cell cycle and cell division, which is again a very very crucial chapter. And then we'll talk about transportation in plants, mineral nutrition. So yes, these are these are like pretty simple chapters. Then we have photosynthesis in higher plants, which is again a very, very dear topic close to me. Then respiration in plants, again, a very important one. Then we'll finish it up with plant growth and development. So these are like basic chapters, which will be covered under botany. And let's see like how it goes. I hope you will be enjoying these sessions. So talking about myself, my name is Kamal Pandey and I'm from Uttarakhand, India. And currently I'm doing my master's from Nottingham Trent University in United Kingdom. So yes, and I have also done my botany honors from University of Delhi. And if you talk about my research in interest, it is in the field of cancer biology. So I was working in the field of cancer biology for like three years at NIT Raudkila. So over there I have like published multiple research papers some book chapters as well. If you want, you can search on my name on Google and definitely you'll find those research papers as well. If you are interested enough to read them, if you have any queries, you can connect with me. Okay. And yes, so in Indian Council of Agriculture Research, there also I work for like one year where we were basically uh, working on uh, creating a, a very good variety of sweet corn. I hope you might have eaten sweet corn. Yes or no? Let me know. Sweet corn. How many sweet corn fans? Yes. Okay. Yes for one. No for two. Sweet corn. Yes. So basically in Indian Council of Agriculture Research, we were developing this uh, novel variety of sweet corn, which is uh, which has a much greater value. So definitely students, if you are in the field of biology, it's not like you can you can only go into the field of medical, right? You can also go into the field of research. That is what I'm doing right now at NTU. So we can talk about all these career aspects in the coming sessions as well, where we'll be having a detailed session, right? Where we'll talk about uh, what kind of career goals that you can choose for yourself and what, what, what kind of subjects you can opt in the upcoming years, okay? I hope you are able to understand me. Yes. Give me a one if you are able to hear me. Yes. Great. That's great. Wonderful. So as I said, I have published some of the research papers as well. If you want, you can go on the Google as well. And here I have like two research papers I have shown. Mm. Just wait a minute, students. I'm not able to move forward. Okay, so here are the research papers. If you want, definitely you can go on and you can read more about them. Any questions, you can definitely ask me and if you talk about NEET exam, so I have provided you a brief introduction about how you can go through it. So it's approximately like three hours, 20 minutes exam. 
and these are the different language or medium which you can go through multiple choice questions are there so this is the basic exam pattern 720 marks i hope you are like very very well aware about all these things if you are not definitely you can download the content and you will be able to know more about it so as you see there are like various multiple sections as well right section a section b will be there like these are the four four different subjects right physics chemistry botany and zoology so each and every section will be having equal number of marks so you can go through it 720 marks for each question will be carrying like four marks so based upon that will be analyzed and if you're talking about this chapter now let us come back to the chapter the living world so these will be some of the new words that you will be coming across right you haven't heard about them i guess some of the students might have heard about them but these are the new terms like binomial nomenclature taxonomy systematics taxon manual monograph catalog herbarium and key so these are like several keywords that will be coming across in this chapter and as i said from this chapter at least like one question comes in the neat exam so if you if you like frankly ask me from which of the topics question will be coming most probably it comes from herbarium key monograph and these sort of topics but this is a quite pretty easy chapter so i guess like scoring four marks is not a big deal yes so so by the end of this session you should be able to uh, know about the characteristic feature of living organisms uh, how to write scientific names right in a proper way uh, talking about taxonomic aids and their usefulness so these will be several questions we'll be answering in this chapter so can you guys tell me like uh, what are the characteristic feature of a living organism or uh, to which organism you will say like somebody is living or not how can you classify that somebody is living or not anybody how are you going to classify whether somebody is living or non living let me know your views You can come on the mic as well. Okay, cellular respiration, growth, consciousness, molecular movements. Okay, growth. Okay, we will talk about it, right? Growth is not always said to be a defining feature of a living organism. So we'll talk about it. Okay, thinking of something. Pulse rate. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic features. Okay. So we will talk about the characteristic All right. So these are the chapter contents. So we'll talk about properties of living organisms, which are growth, reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization, and consciousness. Then we'll be dealing with a taxonomy, systematics, uh, basic processes of taxonomy, which will be characterization, identification, classification, and nomenclature. So basically, this is a summarized version of this chapter. इस पूरे चैप्टर में हम क्या क्या पढ़ने वाले हैं उसकी पूरी समरी इस स्लाइड में तुम्हें मिल रही है है ना तो ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट स्लाइड है कि पूरे चैप्टर का एक ओवरव्यू मिल रहा है हम इस चैप्टर में क्या पढ़ने वाले हैं वट आर वी गोइंग टू गो थ्रू इन दिस चैप्टर सो यूनिवर्सल रूल्स ऑफ बाइनोमल नॉमिन क्लेचर विल टॉक अबाउट देन विल ऑल्सो डील विद टेक्सोनॉमिक कैटेगरीज वट आर दीज टेक्सोनॉमिक कैटेगरीज एंड टेक्सोनॉमिक एड सो दीज आर ऑल लाइक टेक्सोनॉमिक एड्स यू नो वट इज अड एड इज समथिंग दैट विल help us to find out something right so to do the taxonomic classification we have to use all these taxonomic aids like herbarium museum key botanical garden flora catalog monograph manual and zoological park so we'll talk about each one of them in the upcoming sessions so in today's session we'll focus ourselves to 
properties of living organisms and if time persists we'll also talk about taxonomy okay let us move forward and before moving forward let us know our scientists so uh, ncrt mein starting mein hi scientist ka naam diya hai ernest mayer so let us talk about him about his contribution as well so he was born in germany and he's a harvard university evolutionary biologist and one of the 100 greatest scientist of all time and why we'll talk about this as well so he's also referred to as the darwin of the 20th century so his research spanned in the field of ornithology ornithology is what study of birds right jahan pe hum birds ke bare mein baat karte hain taxonomy taxonomy means we are talking about classification of organisms we'll talk about this in detail zoo geography zoo geography means the geographical distribution of animals kis tarah se sare animals jo hai distributed hai hamare geography mein uske bare mein inhone research kari hai kafi evolution ke bare mein bahut padha hai systematics to hum systematics ke bare mein baat karenge and the history and philosophy of biology so these are the various fields uh, in which he has worked so he has also given us a very very important definition of biological species so according to him what a species is so according to him a biological species is a group of organism that can reproduce with one another in nature and produce fertile offspring kya matlab hua iska hum kisi bhi species ko tab hum species kehlayenge kab kahenge jab wo do organisms aapas mein milkar reproduce karke एक फर्टाइल ऑफ स्प्रिंग बना पाएंगे तभी हम उसको एक बायोलॉजिकल स्पीशी कहेंगे ऐसा अर्नेस्ट मेयर ने कहा ऐसी डेफिनेशन दी है बायोलॉजिकल स्पीशीज की यानी कि हमारे पास दो ऑर्गेनिजम्स हैं अगर वो दोनों आपस में मिलकर रिप्रोड्यूस करके एक फर्टाइल ऑफ स्प्रिंग बना पाएंगे तो हम उसे क्या कहेंगे एक बायोलॉजिकल स्पीशी क्या एक क्लियर है डेफिनेशन जो अर्नेस्ट मेयर ने दी थी इज दिस क्लियर येस I have got one from Vibha, Radhna, Devanshi. Yes, I need one from everybody. If you have understood this definition, yes. But there is a drawback as well, right? Of this definition that he has mentioned, because this definition is based on this definition is based on reproductive isolation. We are only talking about uh, one fact that organisms are able to reproduce, right? so what are the exceptions we'll talk about that as well uh yes so if you talk about mules and bananas they are examples of hybrids and they are infertile but this doesn't mean that banana or mule is not a species they are also a species right yes or no mule and banana they are also a particular species yes mule and banana they are also species yes worker bee bees as well but according to the to the definition they will not be considered as as species agar hum sirf definition ki baat kare jo ki ernest mayer ne di hai us hisab se to hum nahi keh sakte na ki mule ek species hai but reality mein to hai but ye exception ki baat aa rahi hai yahan pe to but surprisingly there are many examples of hybrids that can actually have babies for example ligers ab ligers kya hote hain liger is a combination of tiger and lion but liger can reproduce as well right but in this case what you are finding that lion is one species and tiger is one species right two different species but still they are able to produce a fertile offspring to is hisab se to hamari definition galat ho gayi samajh mein aayi baat have you understood this thing because liger is formed from a combination of lion and tiger and both are different species but still they are able to reproduce and produce a fertile offspring so based upon this the definition is wrong yes we can say that so these are like exceptions over here we are talking about but the definition that ernest mayer has given that is broadly accepted okay yes so if you talk about why mule is not able to 
produce fertile offspring. So mule is a cross between a male donkey uh, that is called as jack and a female horse that is a mare. Now, male donkey, donkey and horse, these are two different species, right? A hiney is an offspring. Then hiney, if you talk about is it is an offspring of male horse and a female donkey. And they are not able to produce a fertile offspring. Yes, they have trouble making sperms or eggs because their chromosomes, they don't have, they don't match up well. So because if you talk about a horse, a horse is a fertile offspring. It has 64 chromosomes and a donkey has 62 chromosomes. A mule inherits 32 horse chromosomes from mom and 31 donkey chromosomes from dad. And it will be forming a total of how many? Only 63 chromosomes. So it has, it basically lacks chromosome, right? It is not having sufficient chromosomes to produce a fertile offspring later on. So this is the reason behind why mule and hiney, these organisms are not able to produce fertile offsprings because they're not having sufficient number of chromosomes to do that. Okay, so just a basic information. So there is a definition regarding what is a living organism in NCRT, right? So the NCRT says a living organism is self-replicating, evolving, and self-regulating interactive system capable of very much typical, very much weird to you, but I have a trick for you, how to remember this definition. The trick is here, the memory aid that you can use is rises, right? So R for responding to external stimuli. So if you're talking about a living organism, it will be responding to the external stimulus. So let us say, for example, temperature. So if the temperature rises, definitely if somebody is living, it will be responding to the external stimuli. Second is I, I for interactive system. So definitely we are also interacting with our surroundings. That is what a living organism can do. Then self-regulating, we can regulate our body temperatures as well. Self-regulating, evolving, we do have evolution taking place and then self-replicating as well we can reproduce as well. So this is the basic definition that is mentioned in NCRT and this is how you can remember it. If there is a question from this definition, you can definitely answer it. If you know this, easy memory aid. Is it clear students? Give me a one if, if you all are. Okay, great. So these are the properties of living organisms, which are again mentioned in the NCRT and we'll be dealing with all these properties one by one. So we'll talk about growth. Then you have reproduction, metabolism, cellular organization, and then consciousness. So all these topics will begin. So beginning with the growth. So the first question coming to mind will be, whether growth is a defining feature of a living organism, right? So what is growth? Growth is irreversible in nature. So once a person has grown, right? You won't be able to reverse, reverse and form a baby again. So what is growth? It is the increase in number. Number we are talking about in, in terms of cell division. So whenever a person is growing, if any living organism is growing, what happens? There is an increase in the number of cells. And also, there is an increase in the mass of the cells as well. So what do we say? That increase in number and mass of cells, these both are twin characteristic of growth. Is it clear? So what are the twin characteristic of growth? Number one, increase in number of cells and how this will occur? Increase in number of cells will occur with the help of cell division and then increase in mass of cells as well. So you can easily see in this two figures as well, growing by number, you can see a beautiful GIF over here and then growth by mass in the plants as well. We do grow by mass as well. Yes, so pretty easy concept. So now the question arises that I initially asked you whether growth is a defining feature of a living organism. यानी कि अगर हम कहीं पर भी ग्रोथ देखेंगे क्या हम ये कह पाएंगे कि 
अगर हम किसी भी ऑर्गेनिज्म में किसी भी चीज में ग्रोथ देख रहे हैं क्या हम कह सकते हैं कि ये लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म है पता करते हैं इसके बारे में सो ग्रोथ ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ ड्यूरेशन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट ड्यूरेशन इफ यू टॉक अबाउट इट कैन बी ऑफ टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स वन इज अनलिमिटेड ग्रोथ इन प्लांट ग्रोथ कंटिन्यूज थ्रू आउट द लाइफ स्पैन राइट सो दिस इज वॉट वी कैन से देर इज अनलिमिटेड ग्रोथ while in the case of animals in human beings if you talk about there is a limited growth growth is only up to a certain age but however what you see cell division cell division continuously it takes place cell division will always take place in your body why because old cells the dead cells they they will the old cells will basically die up and they will form your body will renew to form new cells so this is a ongoing process Akash will 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 talk about evolution as well. Not to worry about. Yes. So, is growth a defining feature of living organism? So, growth is not a defining feature of a living organism. Why we are saying that? Because we see growth happening in non-living organisms as well. For example, mountains. Yes. mountains also increase in size so that doesn't mean that mountain is a living organism yes intrinsic growth is the defining feature of a living organism so what we can say if there is a question if there is a question coming in your exam whether growth is the defining feature of a living organism what you will say you will say no growth is not a defining feature of a living organism because mountains boulders they also increase in size but if you talk about intrinsic growth if there is a specific point whether intrinsic growth intrinsic means internal growth so growing internally is this a defining feature of a living organism you will say yes sir it is a defining feature of a living organism is it clear to everybody so we are done with the growth part so we are done with the growth part is it clear whether growth is a defining feature of a living organism or not okay because mountains boulders they also increase in size garbage dump will also increase in size okay yes sana we'll talk about metabolism as well not to worry about yes so next is your reproduction now first we have done with growth second is your reproduction what is reproduction reproduction it is a production of progeny or the younger generation offspring you can say having features similar to those of parents so if you talk about offspring produced by a human being that will be similar to a human being only right so organisms they can reproduce asexually as well as well as sexually you all know that asexual means only one parent is involved while sexual reproduction means there are two organisms involved to produce the progeny as simple as that in unicellular organisms if you talk about now growth in terms of unicellular what is unicellular the term uni means single cellular means cell so all those organisms whose body is made up of just one cell for example bacteria yes so these are what unicellular organism for example amoeba as well these are what this is what unicellular organism so growth and reproduction are same why am i saying that have you understood this part why in the case of unicellular organism growth and reproduction is same because if you talk about a bacteria called as e coli it divides or, or you can say it divides the cell division in bacteria takes place approximately in like let us say 20 minutes so in 20 minutes one bacteria is splitting and forming two bacteria now so what you will say whether it is growing or is it reproducing so both the things are taking place simultaneously it is growing as well and then within 20 minutes it is reproducing as well so what we can say that in the case of unicellular organism growth and reproduction both are same thing is it clear growth is equal to reproduction in the case of unicellular organism if you agree with me press one in the chat box so that we can move forward yes yes arshia intrinsic growth is cell division we are talking about intrinsically growth you are growing from inside as well
okay great so if you are having like any short doubts during the class you can definitely write it down in the chat box as well i'll go through it i'll try to solve it within the class itself yes arshia let me know so what am i saying in the case of unicellular organism let us say you have one bacteria right let us say you have one bacteria and this one bacteria it divides and form two bacteria now yes so this is this has happened within the time frame of 20 20 minutes so in 20 minutes the bacteria has grown in size and it has reproduced as well so what we can say that growth and reproduction they are both both the same things because you're not able to see growth happening because as soon as growth is happening it is dividing as well but if you're talking about multicellular organisms like human beings right so let us say for example a human being generally if you talk about 18 years 19 years right we are like growing and then we start reproducing yes so it's not like that as soon as human beings or any multicellular organism is formed it starts reproducing understanding my point so in the case of multicellular organisms like human beings animals growth and reproduction both are different concepts but in the case of unicellular organism both are same i hope is it it is clear arshia okay great let us move forward so we'll be solving some questions as well so is the reproduction a defining property of living organism now can you tell me whether reproduction is a defining property of living organism reproduction yes or no is reproduction a defining property of living organism okay i'm getting no very good so you have already gone through this chapter that means very good so reproduction again is not a defining property of a living organism why am i saying that because there are many organisms including human beings as well right there are many human beings which cannot reproduce at all so that doesn't mean that we are not species we are also living organisms right there are many organisms like mules worker bees infertile human couples as well so we cannot say that reproduction is a defining property of a living organism because there are several organisms living organisms which cannot reproduce so bahut sare aise bhi living organism hai jo reproduction kar hi nahi sakte hain to hum kaise keh de ki reproduction ek defining property hai agar koi bhi organism reproduce kar raha hai to hum 100% keh sakte hain ki ye living organism hai are bhai koi mule bhi to ek living organism hai par wo reproduction nahi kar pa raha hai तो हम ये नहीं कह सकते कि रिप्रोडक्शन एक डिफाइनिंग प्रॉपर्टी है लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म लेट अस मूव फर्दर सो विल बी सॉल्विंग सम क्वेश्चंस एंड आई वांट योर आंसर्स इन द चैट बॉक्स सो द क्वेश्चन इज इंक्रीज इन बॉडी मास कैन बी कंसीडर्ड अ क्राइटेरिया ऑफ ग्रोथ इन ए बी सी डी i'm still waiting for other students to answer very good students around 74% students have correctly answered the question till now still waiting for others i'll give you like 30 more seconds okay times up now
Okay. So the correct answer is option number C, both A and B. So increase in body mass. So increase in body mass can happen in living organisms as well, right? For example, us, we do increase in body mass while non-living matter. For example, I told you mountain, garbage as well. Garbage dump also increases in, increases in body mass. So we can say that both A and B, that is option number C is the correct answer. Let us solve the next one. Growth in unicellular organisms can be observed by, you have four options, counting the mass of cultured cells. So pay attention to the question, right? Analyzing the amounts of nutrients absorbed by living organism. Growth cannot be observed. Or option number D, simply counting the number of cells under microscope during in vitro culture. In vitro culture, my dear students, it means we are growing these organisms in the lab, right? We can grow bacteria like unicellular organisms like bacteria, amoeba in the lab itself. So this is called as in vitro culture. There is also one another term that is called, called as in vivo culture. In vivo means within the organism, right? In vitro means in the lab, in vivo. In vivo means inside the organism, okay? So you can answer this question. Let me know the answer in the chat box. For the last one, the answer was option number C. Yes. So the correct answer in this case is option number D. So we'll talk about each one of them. So the question was growth in unicellular organism. Unicellular means single cell organism like bacteria. So counting the mass of cultured cells, option number A. So can we count the mass of bacteria? Is it possible? Can you tell me? Cultured cells means, Akash, beta, it means you are growing them in the lab. Yes, we provide food to them and we grow them in the lab. Yes, so can we count the mass of cultured cells? So bacteria is very light in weight, right? You cannot even see bacteria. So can you like count the mass of cultured cells? That is not possible, right? Based upon the based upon the mass of cultured cells, we'll never know whether growth is happening or not. Because you cannot weigh bacteria. They're like very lightweight. So second one is B option is analyzing the amount of nutrients absorbed by living organism. Now, each and every living organism, if you talk about, will be taking up or feeding up different amount of nutrient if you like just compare it with the human beings or any animal. So one person eats four chapatis, other person eats only two chapatis. So can you analyze growth based upon how much a person is eating? Again, not. That is That cannot be the criteria for judging growth. Growth in unicellular organisms cannot be observed by the amount of nutrients that they are taking in. So again, option number B is not a correct option. Then comes option number C, growth cannot be observed. Definitely you can observe growth. It's not like you cannot observe growth at all. So the option number D is the correct answer. Why? It says simply counting the number of cells under microscope. For example, bacteria, if you talk about, you can count the number of cells under microscope. So in this way, you can analyze how much growth has happened. Yes, let us say, for example, we are beginning with one bacteria. And after like, 
and we know that after 20 minutes, one bacteria is dividing. So we can say that after 20 minutes, there will be how many? Two bacteria. After 40 minutes, there will be much more. They'll multiply right now. Now, based upon calculating the number of cells you're observing under microscope, you can tell whether growth is happening or not. Bata sakte hai na? Jitane number of organisms badte rahenge microscope ke under ke niche. Hum bata paenge ki growth ho rhi hai. Samajh maa hai question? Have you understood this one? Yes, Webhav. What haven't you understood? So you can simply count the number of cells under microscope during in vitro culture. That is how you can analyze whether growth is happening or not happening. Next question. Next question. In most of the higher animals and plants, reproduction and growth. Yes, Sana. Let me know your doubt in the chat box. In most of the higher animals and plants, reproduction and growth are synonymous events. Synonymous means same, same, same hai dono. Mutually exclusive events. So, ab is, is, is word ke baare mein tumne probability mein padha hoga mathematics mein class 10th mein. Hai na ki mutually exclusive events, mutually inclusive events. Yes, Sana, I'll, I'll give you my, just wait a minute. Or both A and B or none of the above. Excuse me, sir. Yes, Sana. Sir, in the previous question, mm -hmm. uh, as it was written, unicellular organisms, so sir, the number of cells in a unicellular will always be one. So how can we say that increase in the number of cells? No, but how it will be one? Let us say, for example, at initially, let us say at time right now, you have only one bacteria, right? And you know that this bacteria divides after every 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes, if you see this bacteria under microscope, what you will find? There will be two bacteria, right? After 20 minutes, because one bacteria has divided to form two. Yes or no? Yes, yes sir. Yes. So now what you are seeing that growth is happening, right? Now, initially you had only one bacteria. Now you are having two of them. Now, after again, after next 20 minutes, what is going to happen? This one bacteria will also form two bacteria and the other one will also form two bacteria. Now, how many you are having? You are having four. Yes or no? Yes, sir. So, what is happening? Growth is happening, right? Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. Yes, I can see answers of students. Mm -hmm. B, 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 B. Okay. So option number B, yes. Mutually exclusive events. This is the correct answer. What is the meaning of mutually exclusive? Exclusive matlab, dono hi alag alag hai, hai na? अगर हम हायर एनिमल्स की बात करें हायर प्लांट्स की बात करें तो वहां पर हमें क्या देखने को मिलता है रिप्रोडक्शन और ग्रोथ दोनों ही अलग-अलग इवेंट्स -अलग हैं वो सेम नहीं है सिर्फ यूनिसेल्युलर ऑर्गेनिज्म में हम ऐसा देख पाते हैं कि रिप्रोडक्शन और ग्रोथ दोनों ही सेम चीजें हैं ठीक है ये समझ में आ गया सभी को एवरीबॉडी हैज अंडरस्टूड दिस क्वेश्चन यस और नो कैन आई हैव वन और टू इन द चैट बॉक्स Synonymous to nahi hai. Same same to nahi hai. Mutually exclusive hai. Dono hi alag alag hai. Chalo, bohat badiya. Next one aagya. What kind of growth is exhibited by non-living organism? What kind of growth is exhibited by non-living organism?
Very good. I can see most of the students are answering it correctly. Still waiting for other students to answer. I'll give you 30 more seconds. Okay, so the correct answer is option number A, accumulation of material on surface. Some of the students are saying few students, only two students, they have said growth from inside. So internal growth only takes place in living organism, not in non-living. So non-living organisms only will show growth from outside. That is accumulation of material or substance on the surface itself. Is it clear? Can I have a one? <clears throat> Great. Last question. Which of the following characteristic is not a defining character of living organism? I want active participation from everybody in the class. Some of the students are not answering the question. Last 20 seconds. All right, so this is how the results look like. So the correct answer is option number B, that is growth and reproduction. So which is not a defining feature. Konsa aisa feature hai jo, not a defining feature of living organism, jo define nahi karta hai, kisi bhi living organism ko jo hai growth or reproduction. Dono hi defining feature nahi hai living organism ke. Next is your Metabolism. The third one is metabolism. What is metabolism? Metabolism is the sum total of all the biochemical reactions that are taking place inside a living system. So if you're talking about human beings, right? If you're talking about your body cells now, in your body cells, there are lots of chemical reactions taking place. Yes, there is glycolysis taking place. There is Krebs cycle. There are like loads of loads of chemical reactions which are associated with the cell. Yes, everybody agrees with that. You'll be learning about all these chemical reactions in the coming and in, in the upcoming sessions in the upcoming classes. So the two major the two major types of metabolic reactions are catabolic reactions and anabolic reaction. Now, what is the difference between them? This is a very, very important thing for everybody to understand, right? So what is the meaning of catabolism? Keta means cutting, right? Keta. Keta means cutting. So that means you have a large molecule and you cut it down into small molecules. And whenever this happens, energy is released. Yes. For example, if you talk about glucose, right? Glucose breaking down to form smaller molecules and then you have what? Energy being formed. This is what? What type of reaction? This is your catabolic reaction. 
what type of reaction catabolic reaction now for example if you talk about anabolic reaction we have what example we have example of photosynthesis so in photosynthesis what is happening smaller molecules they result in the formation of a large molecule that is a glucose molecule so what kind of reaction is this this is an anabolic reaction anabolic reaction will make up large molecule while keta keta means cutting down and large molecules will be broken down and energy will be released while in the case of anabolic reaction for example photosynthesis energy will be required energy will be utilized to form these large molecules yes i hope the difference between catabolic and anabolic is clear can i have one in the chat box if you know the difference between catabolic and anabolic reaction now you can see in this gif as well what is happening respiration yes what happens during respiration you have studied respiration like since class 7th i guess yes class 7th was the first time when this chapter respiration came that is what i can remember so during respiration what happens glucose goes in in the presence of oxygen breaks down to produce energy ultimately ultimately energy is produced so what do you have this is what this is a type of catabolic reaction cutting down right something is being broken down to give out energy energy is that means produced during catabolic reactions while on the other hand you have photosynthesis mentioned in the bottom over here carbon dioxide molecules water molecules and what is required sun's energy sun's energy is being utilized to form a larger molecule that is your glucose c6h12o6 so metabolic reactions what is a metabolic reaction sum total of all the biochemical reactions there are like loads of chemical reactions taking place and the sum total of all of them they come under we can put them all under one umbrella that is what metabolic reactions and what we have said that metabolic reactions are of two different types catabolic reactions and anabolic reaction what is the difference between catabolic means cutting down larger molecules broken down into smaller molecules energy will be released whenever you break down a large molecule then you have smaller molecules and energy will be released what is the example example is your respiration respiration or you can say glycolysis taking place while anabolic reaction will include your photosynthesis is it clear give me a one in the chat box if you understood this so that we can move forward great wonderful so talking about whether metabolism is a defining property of a living organism now is metabolism a defining property we have learned that growth and reproduction they are not a defining property of a living organism right intrinsic growth is a defining feature but growth in general is not a defining feature reproduction is not a defining feature whether metabolism is a defining feature let us try to understand that so metabolic reactions they can be demonstrated outside the body as well right in the cell free systems for example in the lab we are to, we, we are talking about let us say in the test tube what we can do in the test tube we can add loads of chemicals and then chemical reaction still will be taking place yes in the test tube also chemical reaction can take place yes or no can i have a yes or no in test tube chemical reactions can take place yes but what are these these are like cell free system Yes, yes, if you are doing, if you you are are doing doing any chemical reaction in a test tube, अगर हम एक टेस्ट ट्यूब में कोई भी केमिकल रिएक्शन करते हैं पर वो सेल में तो नहीं हो रही है ना वो तो सेल्फ फ्री सिस्टम है राइट दीज ऑल द लाइन ये सारी लाइने एनसीआर टी की है तो इन्हें बड़े ध्यान से सुनना तो मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन जो हम टेस्ट ट्यूब में कर रहे हैं जो भी बायोकेमिकल रिएक्शन हम टेस्ट ट्यूब में कर रहे हैं वो तो एक सेल्फ फ्री सिस्टम में हो रही है सेल के अंदर तो हो नहीं रही है, है ना तो आइसोलेटेड मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन in vitro are not living things but are living reactions we can say yes so ultimately what we can say yes metabolism is a defining feature of a living organism kyunki wo ek living organism ke bahar ho hi nahi sakti hai samajh mein aayi baat metabolic reactions kahan hongi ek without cell nahi ho sakti hain to so, ek cell free system mein metabolic reaction hum nahi karwa sakte hain इसीलिए मेटाबॉलिज्म क्या है एक डिफाइनिंग फीचर है लिविंग लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म का अगर कोई भी ऑर्गेनिज्म लिविंग है इसका मतलब क्या हुआ इफ एनीबडी इज लिविंग इट्स बॉडी विल डेफिनेटली अंडरगो दीज मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन अगर कोई लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म है तो उसकी बॉडी निश्चित रूप पे मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन शो करेगी 
क्या है क्लियर हुआ इफ एनी बडी इज लिविंग इट्स बॉडी मस्ट अंडर गो मेटाबॉलिक रिएक्शन ग्रेट सो हेर इज अ क्वेश्चन मेटाबॉलिज्म कैन बी बेस्ट डिफाइंड एज फोर ऑप्शन लेट मी स्टार्ट अ पोल फॉर यू very good like 95% students have correctly answered this question till now and 73% have already answered i want everybody to answer this question it's a pretty simple one straight forward question metabolism can be best defined as i'll be ending the poll in like 10 seconds now 10 or 20 let let me give you more 20 seconds more and the time is over now okay so the correct answer is your option number c the sum total of all chemical reactions occurring in a body so what i told you what is a metabolic reaction or metabolism the sum total of all the biochemical reactions which are taking place inside your body okay great so next is your cellular organization cellular organization means if anybody is living right agar koi bhi organism zinda hai agar hum usko bol rahe hain zinda organism hai to sabse basic cheez kya honi chahiye ki uski body cell se bani ho right its body must be made up of cells so cellular organization must be there so organisms they can be made up of one cell or more than one cells so what, what do we call them if our organism is made up of just one cell we call them as unicellular and if our organism is made up of more than one cell it is called as multicellular so we can say that cellular organization is a defining feature of a living organism agar koi bhi organism cell se milke bana hai to wo hum kya bolenge wo ek living organism hai kya ye clear hai is this clear so we are almost towards the end of the session and we'll be continuing the continuing the session and we'll talk about consciousness in the upcoming classes right and we'll be solving multiple questions as well and we'll also start this new topic that is your diversity in the living world or biodiversity and this is much more interesting i guess like according to me this is much more interesting concepts you learn something new in the diversity in the living world so students i hope you have really enjoyed the session i would love to see you in the next session yes can i have one from everybody yes if you have really enjoyed the session and if you want to connect with me if you have any queries questions you can definitely wait right now or you can connect with me via email as well yes i can just type in my email id if you have any kind of questions you can let me know okay i guess i'm not able to write it right now okay i'll i'll share it in the upcoming sessions not to worry about if anybody has any doubt you can come you can tell me hello sir oh uh, yes hello who is this good evening sir good evening sir intrinsic growth matlab kya hota hai pehle pehle naam naam bata do apna naam kya hai aapka sir i am akash आकाश हाँ जी आकाश क्या बोल रहे हो इंटेंसिव ग्रोथ मींस क्या होता है 
देखो एक्सट्रेंसिक और इंट्रेंसिक दो तरीके की ग्रोथ हो सकती है ना एक्सट्र एक्सट्रेंसिक मतलब एक्सटर्नल जो कि बाहर बाहर से दिख रही है तुम्हें जैसे कि अगर हम क्या बात करें कूड़ेदान की बात करें ठीक है रोज कूड़ा फेंक करेंगे बाहर से ग्रोथ दिख रही है ना तुम्हें बट अगर ह्यूमन बींग की बात करें तो हमारी बॉडी में क्या हो रही है इंट्रेंसिक ग्रोथ भी हो रही है जो की इंटरनल ग्रोथ है जिसको हम क्या बोल रहे हैं सेल्स सेल्स हमारी बॉडी में बनते रहते हैं क्या नए सेल्स बन रहे हैं पुराने सेल्स डेड भी होते हैं तो हम धीरे धीरे तक तो हम बढ़ रहे हैं ना स्टार्टिंग में तो बहुत छोटे से थे तो बढ़ते yes, बढ़ते इंटरनली ग्रोथ हुई है तो इसको क्या बोलेंगे इंट्रेंसिक ग्रोथ कूड़ेदान में तो ऐसा नहीं हो रहा है ना नहीं नहीं हो रहा है तो बस इतनी सी बात है yes, okay. any, any more questions? Okay then, students, I'll see you in the next session, right? Till then, bye bye. Thank you so much. Namaste ji.